No way. Um, you know, blogging is one of those things where uh, it's a little bit like asking who's the first rapper or, you know, who invented rock and roll. You can always go back to somebody earlier, somebody newer. You know, for me, um, I've been doing it, you know, 10 or so years. I started maybe 1999. There's clearly people who influenced me who called what they were doing uh, a weblog in 98, 97. Um, I think, you know, for me, um, Peter Merholtz, who does PeterMe.com, or Dave Weiner, who does Scripting.com, those are influences. But, you know, if you look at the traits of what we consider a blog, personal voice, uses the internet well, rich with links, um, edited by a real human with a human voice, those things, I think you go back to the very first web page. You know, I think if you look at the, the first thing that Tim Berners-Lee posted when he, uh, you know, invented the web, or Mark Andreessen had that first page for... Uh, the first uh, uh, browsers that would, you know, later become Mozilla and Netscape. Uh, those were, you know, the Mosaic browser page in, you know, the very birth of the web was really very similar in format and content to what a blog looks like today. Six Apart's been an amazing journey for me. So the, the company's name comes from our, our co-founders, Ben and Mina Trot. They're a husband and wife couple uh, whose birthdays are six days apart. Um, and, it, and it's interesting because people always perceive it as being about six degrees of separation or something like that. And what I love instead is it's a real human story of two people who are, you know, among my closest friends. Uh, they are this, you know, this great, you know, kind of cute young married couple with a, you know, a little girl like the kind of, you know, American dream where they were high school sweethearts and the whole thing. Um, and out of that has spun, you know, the biggest blogging company in the world, arguably one of the biggest social media companies in the world. It's been tremendously influential. Um, the things we're known for, I think, is creating blogging platforms like Movable Type and TypePad. And so when people go to the Huffington Post and at the bottom it says powered by Movable Type or, you know, you go to BarackObama.com or BritneySpears.com and you see that they're using these tools, um, there's a lot of pride in that. And these days, the company does a lot more. We have a very successful services team here in New York that's helping, you know, all the biggest publishers in the world. Uh, we have an advertising team that's helping individual bloggers like become more successful, so maybe they can do more reporting in their free time or, or cover their topic a little bit more passionately. But what I think has been amazing is going from when I joined Ben and Mina, it was three of us. It was literally in their spare bedroom, and um, that kind of almost prototypical story of a technology company of you know you just have a belief beyond all rationality that what you're doing is important and that. Back then, a lot of people thought blogs were a fad, that it was going to be like CB radio and it would go away. They certainly never thought you would go to whitehouse.gov and the White House website would have a blog on it. And some small part of the reason why that's true or why so much of what we read for fun is from blogs is because of the work that Six Apart has done. So it's been you know, the most gratifying experience of my professional career to have a hand in helping start this thing and to see Literally hundreds of people joined the company uh, as employees, you know, working like crazy, and millions of people uh, work with the, 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 the tools and the technologies we create uh, and have it impact their lives. That there's very few chances in your life you ever get to do something like that. It's been really exciting. The process of creativity on the web, I think, is a little bit different than in other media. I think in uh, in the kind of fine arts, it's something where an artist goes away to their, you know, their cave, or the, the writer has writer's block, and you picture them, you know, kind of huddled up in the attic with the typewriter. Um, and by necessity, creating things for the web is a social behavior. You know, we call it social software, uh, or we talk about social networks. Um, that means it is intrinsically collaborative. And that's true even if you're one person hacking away at a computer in the middle of the night. You are always thinking of what other people want, what other people do, what their behaviors are. There's always a dialogue implicit in what you create. And that might be new. You know, we've had artists that work in film and in TV, and they're obviously thinking of an audience. But they aren't necessarily thinking of it as an iterative process. You know, very few films go out to theatrical release, come back, get feedback, and change what they did in the film for a second release. Um, with software, that happens every single day on the web. And that is... It's a thrill. I love talking to groups of people. I love talking to you know, our customers and users or the people that read my blog. And um, that idea of, I'm, instead of throwing a sculpture out to you, I'm going to throw a lump of clay out to you all and you're going to shape it. 
and I'm going to take it back and, and respond to that. I've had a lot of people over the years ask me to write a book, and I felt like, one, everybody I know that writes a certain kind of book, they know they're not going to make any money with it. It's certainly not for that. They want to have it on their resume, and they want to have the chance to go and talk about it and do a book tour. And I get frustrated because I think, well, why can't I do a blog tour? You know, over the years, I've probably written 10 books worth of text on my blog, and yet it doesn't open the doors. Nobody ever goes on a late-night talk show to talk about the new blog they launched. Um, and so I think there's been a real, a real reckoning where I, you, know, you have to wonder if you're going to put your principles into play. So that I, I believe the best way to share an idea right now, to get an idea out in the, in the popular culture, is to have a dialogue about it on the web with the people that are most informed about it. And I think 20 years ago, the best way to get an idea out in the culture was to write a lengthy book about it and hope that people talked about the book and shared the idea. Um, and so I think a book is an artifact of a person's ambition in their career. I think if you're Malcolm Gladwell or Chris Anderson, you can make some money with it, but most people don't. Um, and so it, after a while, it's kind of saying, well, do I want to prop up a system that says a book is the only way to get an idea into popular discussion? Uh, do I want to make sure that the best ideas are happening on the web, which is the medium that I care about and that has been most generous to me? You know, the publishing industry has not built my career, and the web industry has. So I kind of want to honor where I came from. So I think I have a book in me. I have a book's worth of information to share. Um, do I have to kill trees to get that idea out there? I hope not. Mm -hmm.